Hello, hello, my name is Taylor. I am a financial coach and I want to help you guys get set up in your monarch money step by step. It can be a difficult transition if you're coming from Mint or YNAB. And so I want to help you guys have the best experience so that this app will work for you in the long run, whether you're trying to pay off debt, save for future goals, or if you're just trying to track your cash flow uh, for your family. So Let's dive into it. But first, I do want to let you guys know that I have other services available to help you get set up ways to that you can ask questions, get help with your monarch, uh, have me take a look at your situation and what needs to change in your budgeting app uh, to work for you. And so if you want to get access to those services and new updates for any new things that are coming out, please make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter. So I have a link to my website below, you can go to the website and put your email address in so I can send you email updates occasionally I don't blast emails um, occasionally I'll send out emails so that you can get the latest and greatest as far as getting help with monarch money so uh, but let's dive in let's go step by step of what you need to do when you create your account so when you create your account, the first thing you're going to see is a pop-up that says connect your accounts. It's going to want you, it's going to prompt you to connect your bank accounts to Monarch Money. Uh, for one, I highly recommend that you do connect your bank accounts. Uh, please don't do this manually. I mean, if you really want to, great, do that. Um, but normally there's just way too many transactions to deal with. So I really highly encourage you to connect your bank accounts. Uh, there are so many uh, institutions that work with Monarch. The, yes, there are institutions that don't work as well. They don't play nice either with Plaid or Monarch or something else is going on, there are banks that are just not going to have a great time with uh, either Monarch or just any budgeting app. Uh, Amex was one of them. So that's like a big bank. I think it's a little bit better now or if because most of my clients have no problem with Amex anymore. But like for most banks, though, I haven't had a huge issue. I've never signed on a client and been like, oh, sorry, your bank doesn't work uh, or we can't use Monarch. That has never happened. Uh, and so go, I mean, for tiny, tiny credit unions, I still work. So I mean, sometimes it has issues where you have to reconnect a few times, um, you know, a month or every six months or something like that. It happens, but it's, it's something that is easily, um, you know, you can easily work around with no problem. So obviously there's going to be exceptions. I don't work with thousands of people at once, so I'm sure there's exceptions to that, but I do want to just let you know that it's uh, to get your bank accounts connected. Um, what bank accounts should you connect? At least the very minimum, you have to connect accounts that you are actively spending money on. And so if you are using um, Monarch to track your expenses, you need to put your savings, your checking, any credit cards that you're using, even credit cards that have just one subscription on it, put make sure you connect it. If it's a credit card that you're trying to pay off and you stopped using, I would highly suggest you connect it because there's normally interest charges that are coming on that credit card. You want to track the balances so you can pay off that credit card and work towards that goal. So I would highly suggest making sure that that is still connected. Now you can connect everything to get a net worth. Your net worth is a, a big snapshot of your assets and your liabilities. So everything you own minus everything you owe. Uh, and if you want to connect everything to Monarch, that's a great way to track your net worth. And Monarch makes it really easy to do that. So you can do your cash or checking account. You can do all your investment accounts. Uh, most investment accounts work just fine with Monarch. There are some institutions where you do need to do this manually, but luckily your investment accounts normally aren't part of your budgeting process. You're normally not budgeting uh, dividends in your, in your investment account. So you can also do this manually and just update the account every month or so or every quarter and you can do that just through that add account button and this um, button right here for add manual accounts. You can type in uh, the balance, what kind of account it is, make sure you pick the right account here, whether it's an asset or a liability, um, and then you can manually update that. You can also put manual uh, transactions in it. So that is uh, something that is available to you. Uh, the other thing you can do is add your real estate investments. You can do this either through Zillow, so you can just get Zillow's price on your investments, or uh, you can manually up those, update those as well. So if you have multiple investment properties, maybe you just want to uh, manually update the value of those, or maybe you want to exclude it. Again, it's totally up to you of how much of a net worth statement you want. For me, I uh, have retirement quite far out, so I actually only want to see my liquid net worth, the net worth that I'm budgeting with. Retirement uh, funds that are going out into my investment accounts are not going to be touched for a very long time, so I don't actually bother even looking at the balances. Um, I check the balances on their own website, 
it through the institution. I don't do it through my budgeting app, but that is completely up to you. Most people want to see a whole full picture. So I, rec I encourage you to connect everything so you can be monitoring these balances. Um, you can have your loans in here as well as uh, your car. You can actually even put your uh, car value in here using the, the VIN number of your vehicle to get an idea of if you know if you sold your car minus the loans, what, what's the value? So uh, connect everything if you want or just at the very minimum, connect the accounts you're using or credit cards that you're trying to pay down. If you have a loan to a family member, you can also add that as a manual account if you wanna be tracking the balance as you pay that off. You just put that in as a loan, um, put in the balance, name it as a loan for family and you can go from there. So that's step one. Um, step two is to add some depth to these accounts. Now that you have them in there, go ahead and rename them. Rename them to something that actually is meaningful instead of just like Chase checking 0112, right? It's very boring that way. Uh, what we want to do is uh, add some uh, details so that we can clearly see what these accounts are for. So the checking account, probably pretty straightforward, but like if you have a savings account that is for a very specific goal, for example, so in like my joint savings account, I've renamed this as a travel fund. This is a demo account. This isn't a real account, um, but I've named it joint savings travel funds. So that way I know that in when I'm looking at my net worth, I know what these accounts are for, what they're set aside for, and it's just easier for me to see my net worth statement. So again, you'll click on any of these accounts. You will go in the top corner here to edit. You will edit the account here and you will uh, type in the name. Uh, these you can leave alone, especially if you've pulled the account in automatically, but you may need to adjust that. If it's showing up a little weird, maybe you need to change that, but an asset is something you own. Um, and so, you know, the, your savings account is are things you own, so that should be just fine. Um, this invert account balance, don't worry about this. There's very unique situations that need to deal with this, and I have not even ran into it myself. I'm sure it exists because it's there. So, um, you know, that's something to work with the Monarch team. If there's something weird going on and you might need to use this, they might tell you to use that. Okay, so you have a couple other options here. The visibility. If you click on the hide this account from the list, it will hide it from this list right here. It won't show up here, but it's still connected. It'll just say like, a, it'll have a little message at the bottom and little gray letters saying this is a hidden account and I can show you what that looks like. The reason why you'd want this is if you have accounts for other family members that you're not budgeting for, if you have your kids' accounts connected to your, uh, that were pulled into Monarch, that were uh, connected to your bank, uh, you may not want to see them in your net worth. You might not care what your kids' accounts look like or what transactions are coming through so you might want to hide these now the problem is is that if you hide these things like let's say you click on all these you don't want that hidden from the list you don't want the balance and the net worth and you don't want to see transactions for cash flow and a budget the problem is is that they will still show up so I'm gonna go ahead and press save on that um, I'm gonna go to my uh, okay, so as you can still see all the transactions are still there. If you went to transactions and you were looking at your account and if we found one of those interest charges and I don't know when they show up here, but it all it'll do is have a little eye next to it. Um, and I'll show you what that icon looks like once I find that interest charge. Oh, I can't find it. Anyway, it's still in there. Um, I probably just cruised right through it. Um, but this little eye right here, it's an eyeball with a slash. Um, it's just saying that it's hidden from your uh, like cash flow reports and budgets, it's not adding into any of the um, calculations it's doing for income or expenses, which can still be cluttered. You may not wanna still see those transactions if it's a kid's expenses, if you don't care what your kids are spending money on, you don't wanna see it. What I would do is actually just delete it from Monarch. So you go into edit, edit the account. If you do not wanna see these transactions, don't just hide it, just go ahead and delete it. Just get rid of it, close it. Um, if you close it, then you'll still have all the historical information, so all those transactions, and you probably don't want to deal with that either. Um, but maybe you do, maybe, you know, you're closing an account, you've paid off the debt, you want to keep the historical information, but you don't want to show up in your net worth anymore, that's what you'll use that for. But if you are not wanting to see any of it, just go ahead and delete it. Uh, you can always put it back, so no stress there. You'd have to just re-enter your credentials to connect the institution again, and it, it can come back. So, um, But if you don't need to see those accounts that come in that are not necessary for you to budget or to monitor, great, leave it alone. Okay. So that is really a step one. Step two is actually a different video, but the reason why is because it's a really complex uh, setup. So uh, before I dive into that though, 
Uh, you'll notice that there are, uh, for step two, uh, there's a lot of things that you have to do to get everything set up in Monarch. And I do offer one-on-one -on -one financial coaching. And when my clients sign up for full-on financial coaching where we're reviewing all their expenses, figuring out what their long-term goals are, figuring out a budget to, and a way to pay off the debt, like it's a whole overhaul of your financial situation. It takes two to three months to work with me, but I just want to let you know that because if you are even considering using that service, I do all of the next steps for you. I take over all that, save yourself some time. You don't have to worry about any of this. Um, so if you're considering working with me, hold off, get on the, get on the Q and A call. Maybe I'll do this for you. Or, you know, I do have a little bit of a wait right now. And so if you want to get set up, just know that, you know, that's something that I am going to work on with you. So no stress. If you're worried about doing it incorrectly, set it up however you want. We'll work on that together once we, once we start working together. Um, but for everyone who is doing this themselves and wanting to get this all set up, your next section, no matter, don't, you don't need to do anything else. You, you've connected your accounts. You don't need to look at your transactions. You do not need to import your mint transactions yet. Uh, you don't need to go into the budget just yet. You're going to go into your settings. Your settings is the top gear icon right here. You're going to click on your settings and you are going to update your categories. You're going to do this second. This would be the next thing you do after connecting your accounts. And the reason is, is because if you try to do anything else, you're going to end up with a lot of categories that you don't need, a lot of clutter, a lot of confusion, and it just gets really frustrating. So you got to set up your categories. Here's the thing. I have an entire video on setting up categories. It was a kind of a long video because it was an in-depth, uh, oh, like a philosophy, like the philosophy of setting up your categories. It was the how to exactly how to do this in Monarch. So please go and watch that video next. That is your homework before our step two or our part two of this series of getting you set up in Monarch step by step. Um, watch that video first. And then when I uh, pull up the next section of when we're going to start kind of on step three, I guess, um, I want your categories completely organized based on the video that I have for you. Uh, it's going to be a little card at the end of this video. So you can just click on that right after this one. Um, a couple things to know that I didn't talk about in the last video though, is, uh, first off with your, uh, paychecks and income. Uh, this is all an income section. So you have income labeled right here. You have expense labeled right here. Do not create a group here if you were trying to create an expense group this creates an income group because it's right next to income so another group is like this thing right here or your gifts and donations auto and transport those are all groupings the housing bills and utilities um, you can create income groups but a lot of people click this and start making expense groups but it will always be considered income in monarch it's going to treat it when it in cash flow in this whole section it'll just have, it'll always sit right here and that will be very incorrect uh, so just make sure that's just one thing to make sure you create when you create an expense group new groups for your expenses Make sure you click on this one right here The other thing to know is to not get rid of interest um, Especially if you have a high yield savings account for your long-term goals Which you absolutely should have if you don't that's a whole other video we'll have to do But um, you absolutely should have a high yield interest savings account and that means you're going to have interest charges coming through You want this category you also want to keep this one even if you don't have other income coming in you want to have this because every single one of my clients has income that comes in from the universe somewhere. I don't know, but it's always something. Maybe it's a bill that you overpaid like five years ago, or it's a friend that just decided to give you money or it's like some birthday gifts or I don't know. I don't know. There's always something though. So leave this here for other income that does not classify as a paycheck or business or interest. You, you want to keep that there. Um, watch the video for the next video about categorizing to set up all of these, uh, the groups, all the categories. This is good. That's going to be absolutely crucial. Um, the reason why you want to do this before your mint uh, import is when you import mint, it's going to ask you how you want to categorize the thousands of, of categories that mint had. And it's trying to, you're trying to consolidate. You don't want to come in with mint on 5 million categories because it is kind of a pain to come in here and delete all of those categories that you do not need. And there are a ton of them. There's like three categories for food for like groceries like there's so it's so unnecessary so just set this all up so that way when you when you put your mint uh import into monarch it's going to ask you hey you have this category in mint called food and dining what category do you want to put that into when you switch to Monarch? And you can click the category that you chose. I want to put all of my uh, food and dining, maybe for now, just into groceries. And then the restaurants. I actually do want to put in restaurants. 
And then coffee shops. Maybe I don't want to track coffee shops. Maybe that's not relevant to me. I want to just label all of it in restaurants and bars. Put it there. Uh, maybe you had categories for things like uh, kids' expenses. But going forward, you don't want five different categories for re different kids' expenses. Maybe you just want one category for that. Set those intentions up now so that when you upload your mint transactions, you do not come in with 500 uh, other categories for categories that you do not need. Uh, okay, so if you don't set up your categories first, you don't set up your groups for relevant uh, groups that mean something to you. If you don't have kids, get rid of this stuff. Like clean this up before you start moving on to everything else. I think this is my number one piece of advice for you as you just get started with Monarch. All right, well, that's everything for this first, uh, first part in this series of getting started with Monarch. Watch the next video, that's your homework, and then we'll start on step three um, at our next video. Now, remember, uh, if you need more help, if you have questions, if there's things that you guys have asked me in the comments and I did a terrible job responding to because it's so hard to respond in text form when I wanna show you in a video, uh, these are things that I can do for you through a lot of different um, options in my services that I have. So please make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter so you get information on when I do office hours, Zoom calls, uh, Q&A sessions so that you can get your questions answered, uh, get some audits for your uh, budget, and make sure you're setting this all up uh, for success uh, for the long run. So thank you so much. Subscribe to the newsletter, subscribe to YouTube, leave your comments uh, with questions. I still do my best to answer as best I can. So let me know and thank you so much.